All right, guys, it's a hot one in Nashville today. It is summertime. That means a lot of big things are on the rise. Health is getting better. Things are happening. There's so much to do. And today we have what you've all been waiting for. Let's see if I can get in here by myself. What's up, guys? Man, it is hot as hell outside. What's up? My name is Paul the Fifth. Fifth. I'm gonna go ahead and drink to this. Well, I got some water right here. This one, and I've got another one. These are locally brewed brews. Check it out. This is my favorite local brew. This is a peanut butter stout made right here locally in Nashville, Tennessee. This was brewed at Tailgate Brewery off of Charlotte Pike. Super cool place to check out. I'm gonna go ahead and down this bad boy. What's good, YouTube? So what does me walking into the studio with a whole bunch of water and down in a cold one before starting this video really have to do with anything you might be asking yourself? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let me explain why I did that. If you didn't know, summertime is officially here. Things are in full swing here in Nashville. And do you know what that means? Things are getting back to normal a little bit. We are seeing and feeling a sense of normalcy. Tours are happening and I love it, I love it, I love it. And I really hope that you and your family are having a good summer as well. Things are hot and they're humid outside. What's up everyone? My name is Paul the Fifth. Fifth. Now before I get too deep into today's video, let me set the scene and tell you why I'm doing this whole thing. So my idea and my thought process when I moved from Southern Indiana to Nashville six years ago, I was wanting to break into the live sound industry and I wanted to become a front of house engineer. I wanted to work in the CCM industry, but since that really hasn't worked out, I did find that my niche is right here in the studio. So instead of taking you this summer to different venues, showing you their front of house and monitor consoles and routing and speaker systems and all that, I am taking you out on the road for some field trips and get ready for this. Okay, I am taking you on a Nashville Studios tour. I'm taking you to some of the hottest studios in the city, some of the hottest Nashville recording studios. They are making that fire music and I promise you, they are bringing you that Mm, eat. Eat, eat. So the tour is me showing you different studios throughout Nashville. Some are commercial facilities, some are home studios, and everything in between. If you might be in the Nashville or surrounding area and you want to be part of this series, please drop me an email at LegacyStudiosNash at gmail.com. I got this idea on New Year's Eve when I was at home watching YouTube and I thought, what can I do to be different, make good and better content, stand out, to make something interesting for viewers like you? What can I do to differentiate myself from everybody else that's doing this YouTube thing and all the other of existing hundreds of home studio guys and gals and stand out? So let's face it, I am an Indian guy living in Music City, the country capital of the world. But guess what? Nashville isn't just country anymore. We have been the home to CCM, or Christian Contemporary Music, for years now. We have a big jazz scene. Rudy's is one of my favorite jazz clubs ever. There's a great rock scene, an indie scene, hipsters galore, and now we've got EDM and hip hop taking over as well. 
I did some planning, reaching out, plotting, and here it is. Last fall, for those of you that may be new to the channel, you may have seen my progression of gear that I've purchased so far. So for episode one, I figured why not show you my studio, what I call my rig run down. This is my gear, why I got it, how I use it, and where you can get it to. I'm breaking this video of my studio tour down into four segments. Hardware, software, artwork, vibe, social media, connections, and amenities. Some of the first few tours will be some studios from my hometown of Evansville, Indiana. That is where I grew up, that's where I'm from, and I figured I might as well show you some studios from my part of the country. After that, I'll be showing you more studios within the same building that I'm at here in Nashville at Diamond Sound Studios. I'll even be showing you how to do a live rehearsal setup with my friend Cole. One of the very first studio tours here in Nashville is going to be a very special one to all of us here in Davidson County. For now, I'll just leave it at that. I can't give away too many details because, you know, the magician can't give away all his secrets, right? But for now, I promise you, it's going to be really cool. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. To give you an idea of my studio space, I'm in a commercial facility called Diamond Sound Studios in Nashville. And this is a huge rehearsal studio. We have five main rehearsal studios here and about 60 monthly lockout rooms within the building. I am the first room you come to upon entering the building, which has its advantages and disadvantages. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I come in, I'll say, I have access and you'll see me walk right into my room. Now this is great because I can come right in but the downside is sometimes I can hear folks walking and talking throughout the halls and bringing in some of their gear because the space isn't totally soundproof. And my space is 14 foot wide by 11 foot wide. I do keep my workspace in the middle of this back corner over here. Let me go ahead and show you it. As I stated earlier, I'm breaking this video down into four different sections. Let's start with number one, the hardware. This is my desk. I have this desk here from Guitar Center. It's a Studio RTA producer station in a maple finish. I got it in 2016 from my friend Joey, who at the time, he was my GC Pro representative. I got this one because it has ample rack space for my interfaces. Up here, there's a decent amount of space for monitors. Myself, I have a hard time seeing. I've mentioned this off and on. So I got myself a 55 inch Vizio TV to help me see things a little better. Due to that, I was able to get one monitor up here. I did get some speaker stands, which by the way, is the number one video if you look on YouTube for Proline adjustable speaker studio stands. I'm very happy about that. So if you haven't seen it, Go ahead and check that out. Just plugging that a little bit there. Before I break into my studio tour, there is one very important aspect of any studio, including yours, that often gets overlooked. Power. It takes a lot to power all this equipment. So I have four different power blocks that have surge protectors built in. So if any bad weather happens, which it seems to do that here in Nashville, all my equipment is safe. I've got this broken down into about three different ways. I've got it set up for my speakers and TV on one grid, my interfaces on another, and then my computer and miscellaneous on another. Please make sure to protect your investment. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the heartbeat of Legacy Studios Nash. This is my computer. It is a 2020 M1 Mac Mini. I customize it with 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and even though Apple makes incredibly solid products, way back here, I do have a four terabyte G drive. It's an external hard drive that I keep here strictly at the studio. 
And I do have about three or four other external hard drives that vary between two and five terabytes that I got from Sweetwater. And it's just so important to have multiple hard drives in case something crashes or fails. Am I right? Hard drives, gotta back up your shit. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know who that was? Well, let me tell you, that was Mr. Jerry Horton from Papa Roach. And if you didn't know this, I happen to have a history with him. Don't believe me? Okay, yeah, well, check this out. Yeah, there you have it. So that picture was from 2006. Yeah, for real, that was Jacoby and yours truly. I worked as a DJ for a rock radio station called 103 GBF, the River City Rocker. That's when I lived in Evansville, Indiana. That was after a concert one night that we hosted. So here's how I got the name Paul the Fifth. Fifth. I began as an intern in radio and I had to do some intern dirty work one day and I signed my name as Paul V since my last name starts with a V. My promotions manager Bobby G saw this and he said, I'm giving you a new nickname. I'm going to call you Paul the Fifth because V is Roman numeral for five. That was my radio station name and it has stuck with me ever since. <laughs> All right, enough of story time. Let me give you a background of my education in this music production journey. In 2008, I moved from Evansville to Chillicothe, Ohio, where I attended the recording workshop. I went back again in 2015, right before I moved here to Nashville. Then I attended SAE Institute. I attended from 2016 and I graduated in 2017 at the top of my class. And then not too long after, I began Legacy Studios Nash in 2019 and here we are. For my interfaces, over the years I've had many different setups, consoles, analog, digital. I have used and I still have an Apollo Twin and I've got an Apogee Element 88. But my current setup, my main interface is an 18i20, and underneath that, I've got a Focusrite Octa Pre Dynamic, and under that, I've got an old, old 2012 Focusrite Octa Pre Dynamic Mark II. I have them all connected via ADAC cables in the back and synced within the Focusrite control software. The main reason I chose to go all Focusrite is for the I.O. inputs and outputs. The ease of use, the capability to record remotely using my iPad. I really dig the plugin bundles that it comes with. And this line just has a really distinct sonic characteristic that I really like. As a drummer, I really need a lot of inputs. This offers me the IO that I need. 18 in and 20 out. Here's my IO setup. For my Pro Tools template, for inputs one through five, I use those for instrumentation. On input one that's highlighted, it says room one. This acts as two different things. I use a slate large diaphragm condenser mic mainly for vocals on this input, but when I'm tracking drums, I'll use that as a room mic to get a bigger, beefier sound. Input two, acoustic guitar. Input three, bass guitar. Four, electric guitar. And for input five, Room two, I have a PZM style microphone that I keep in a certain spot to capture a room ambience. Kick in, kick out, snare top. And you'll notice channels nine and 10 aren't labeled, but they have audio recorded here. For the 18i20 routing, you'll notice on the input it says loop one and loop two. These are built in so that you can record an external source, say, maybe something from YouTube. Moving along, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, tom three, hi-hat left, hi-hat right, overhead left, and overhead right. I've got a drum aux, and then I've got a couple other auxes here that aren't named, and then my master fader. Pretty basic template here, just kind of for some drum tracking and experimentation. Let's move on to logic for the logic template. You may notice this looks very similar to the Pro Tools template. Inputs one through five I use for instrumentation. Input one doubles as the room mic or vocal. Uh, acoustic guitar, bass guitar, electric guitar, room two. Kick in, kick out, snare top. Then we have our loop one and two. 
we have snare bottom, tom one, two, and three, hi-hat left, hi-hat right, overhead left, overhead right, and two things that are a little different here. I have a room left and room right. What I did on that was basically duplicating the overhead left and overhead right, and I wide panned these, just to give the drums a little bit bigger of a feel. That's it for my templates. These are pretty basic. They're just for some mediocre testing and drum tracking. Let's move on. A few features I really dig about this interface would be the air feature. Once the air button is enabled, it really acts as a high shelf. It gives you a really nice, clear, high-end crispness to your mix. And then another feature I really dig is the Focusrite control software. It's very intuitive, easy to use and set up. It gives you, the engineer, a great deal of flexibility as far as creating custom headphone mixes, routing with your DAW, and Focusrite even made an app for iOS remote recording. I use it on my iPad a great deal. Another great feature I really dig about this interface is the Alt button. This allows you to toggle between your near field and far field monitors. Speaking of which, these bigger ones on the ends are my BX8As, and they feature an eight inch speaker with nice tweeters and just give you a really nice overall rounded mix. They hit hard, they get loud while giving you a true sound of your mix. For my near fields, I have a pair of Atom Audio T7Vs my good friend Keiko gave me these. Check out the surprise video from about three years ago. Right, my car's at the bottom. Come on, Paul. I'm parked right next to you. <laughs> All right, we're about to film something on camera. That is a surprise for surprise. Paul. Surprise for Paul because this man has helped me ever since we both graduated from SAE yeah. and we were good buddies learning how to be audio engineers and then I wanted to make my first EP and I thought I'd hit up my friend Paul because he's like really super talented and then Paul was super busy building out his uh, studio at the time and said he may need a little more time to figure it out and he put me in touch with our good friend yeah, Kevin. What a small world. And Kevin's been banging it out, helping me with my EP. And so I wanted to return the favor to Paul, who honestly wouldn't I wouldn't be here today with Kevin if it weren't for Paul. Making this all happen. Making this all happen. Okay. This is really candid because you're like eating crystals and I love crystals. Yeah, we're real. Yeah. It's like right. this is fabulous. I just came from another We're not trying to dress it up for the camera. This is 100 percent real. Oh, oh my Daddy. God! They're here. They're here. <laughs> so today, Paul is getting Adam's audio speakers for his studio. His new T7B monitors from Adam Audio. Are these eight inch? They're the seven inch. The seven. Yes, not the T5Bs, but the T7Bs. <laughs> For his near field monitors. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. <laughs> oh for God, Paul. I'm so and I'm so happy Thank to do you. it. And I this just so cool. wanted to what? tell this is you so awesome. I am so thankful for you to put me in touch with Kevin. Awesome. And I want these to deck out your studio. And I'm just so grateful to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, man. <laughs> Good. Wow. Wasn't that so nice of her? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Keiko, for blessing me with these. You'll never know how much that has really meant to me. I really dig these because they are rather flat, but they're a great way to reference your mix in conjunction with the BX8As. Also for monitoring, I have an old Bluetooth speaker here that I got when I worked for at and I also monitor on my other iPhone, for headphones, I have two pairs of Sennheiser HD280 Pro, a pair of Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro, and Slate VSX headphones. When it comes to instruments, here's my guitars. 
This one here is an Epiphone. It's an acoustic electric that I got when I was in Chillicothe, Ohio in 2015. When I was a student at the Rec W, we took a trip from Chillicothe up to Columbus for the weekend and I got that bad boy there. I really like it, it sounds great. This is probably my favorite bass guitar of, out of all the basses that I have had. This is a Sterling, I believe it's from the 1960s. And again, my friend Joey, who was my GC Pro rep, he sold that to me. I love it, it's got a great tone, it sounds thick, good attack, and overall, I just really enjoy these two guitars. Let's move on. Check this out. This is my hand-signed drum head from none other than Mr. Sean Fuller of FGL. Funny enough, actually this is really cool, it's not funny. Sean and I are both from Evansville, Indiana. Turns out Sean is my cousin Emily's best friend Heather's cousin. Wrap that around your brain. Yeah, it's pretty flippin' cool. Let's move on. What's up? Did you touch my drum set? Because I think that you might have. So this is my drum kit. I call this a Frankenstein kit because it's bits and pieces of different kits I've had throughout the years. The main frame of the kit is a PDP X7. It came originally with an 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 inch tom. When I was back in Indiana, I turned the 8 inch tom into a sub kick. However, I lost it in the move from Indiana to Tennessee. I currently have the traditional Nashville setup, including the 12 inch rack tom, 14 and 16 inch floor toms, 14 inch snare drum, two hi-hats for my main cymbal setups. I'm using a set of all minor dark cymbals. I changed to those in 2016 from Zildjian A Customs. I have a 14 inch classic hi-hat on my left, and for my hi-hat right, I've got a Zildjian 15 inch pitch black dark. I have 16, 17, and 18 inch crashes, a 20 inch ride cymbal. On the drums, I have a kick in, kick out, snare top, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, tom three, hi-hat left, hi-hat right, two overheads, and I've got two room mics in the back. Behind the camera, my main vocal mic, I'm using that as a room mic. Oftentimes what I'll do to make these drums sound a little bigger, I'll take that mono channel, I'll duplicate it, and wide pan things to make those drums sound big fat and thick and in your face. All right, let's keep moving on. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that I do have a Pearl double pedal. It's a power shifter eliminator. Forgot to throw that in. I also forgot to mention that on drums, my drum heads are Evans Level 360 Black Chrome Edition. They just add a really cool vibe to the blue black fade. What do you think? Not bad. That wasn't actually me playing at all. That was an Apple loop if you couldn't tell, but this is my M Audio Keystation 49ES. I do like to use that for a lot of MIDI programming. Mics, 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 mics. I am swimming in microphones. In the studio here, one part is not more important than the other. You can't have your recording software without having an artist or an instrument to record. You can't have your microphones without your DAW, but it is important to be able to capture your source and capture it well. To my right, your left. Over here, I have my 57 knockoffs. I've got five of the Pile 57 versions, and here I've got two of the Behringer 57 models that they make. Over here to my left, I'll get to these in just a moment. They are my prized possession, but I'm gonna save the best for last. Right here, I've got a stereo pair of the Samson CO2s, currently using those for my drum overhead mics. Right here, I have got my Slate VMS2. They are pencil condensers. They are small, but they pack a powerful punch. I've got one as my snare bottom, and I've got the other two as my hi-hat mics. 
right here i've got a stereo pair of rode nt1a's they were stereo matched i got them from sweetwater a few years back they not only came with a spider mount but a pop filter as well they sound great on everything from drums guitar vocal i actually even use them on drum overheads as well as i put them out in the hallway and blend in natural reverb to get an added effect this one here is similar to the 414 but this is the younger cousin of that this is the akg c214 another studio workhorse i've got two of these bad boys they are super sensitive but they capture a great performance i've got a few mics that aren't in this picture for my main vocal mic i've got a slate vms1 i love it it's a large diaphragm condenser mic in the slate software it's got microphone emulations it is great if you want more information check out slatedigital.com the other mic that i don't have listed here is similar to a pzm but it is a room mic that i've got i keep it on my workstation and it acts as another room mic and we'll save the best for last this is the brand new well my brand new warm audio 47 junior this bad boy here comes with a really nice heavy duty sturdy shock mount and here she is let me open it up really quickly for you i just got this last week this is the smaller version of the warm 47 which is a recreation of the fet 47 a lot of times used on kick drums acoustic guitar sometimes vocals and rooms I'm so excited to check this bad boy out. My new friend Ashley here at the studio, she has a U87. I am really a little jealous of that. However, I'm very happy for her. And as friends, the friendship that we do have, she has offered to allow me to use that mic. In the meantime, here is my Warm Audio 87. This is their version and recreation of that classic model. Let's take a look. Our paperwork, our shock mount. This bad boy feels heavy duty and sturdy. And similar to the U87, we have got a really nice wood, looks like maybe cherry case. And here it is. I'm a little nervous to pull it out. Ooh, whoa, this bad boy's got some weight to it. Ah, here is the Warm Audio 87, everybody. Looks pretty much identical to the U87. I can't wait to try this out. I do have a video coming up where I'm gonna put this as a drum overhead in conjunction with the 47 and see how those sound. I'm also gonna be doing some videos with acoustic guitar and vocals between these two mics. Some other mics that aren't in the picture because they are currently on my drums are the Sennheiser package. I've got four Sennheisers on my toms and a 57 on the snare. I've got a Sennheiser on my kick in and on my kick out, I've got a Solomon Subkick. It's also known as a Low Freak. It captures those low frequencies, 20 hertz to about 5,000 hertz. This pretty much wraps up my mic collection here at Legacy Studios Nash. Let's talk software. Earlier in the video, I mentioned we would break this down into a couple parts, hardware and software. It is time to talk about the latter. I wanna mention my DAWs. I used to be a Pro Tools wizard once upon a time, if you can believe that. But about three years ago in 2018, I switched to using Logic primarily. 
I love it for its workflow. There is no monthly subscription. There are free updates. I really dig the native plugins and the ability to have multiple sessions open up all at once. There is no unlock required, but I do keep Pro Tools around just in case I get a Pro Tools session for mixing or mastering. I have also created my own templates for efficiency, smoother, and faster workflow. When it comes to plugins, I've got almost everything from A to Z. And Terry, Celemonies, Melodyne, Fab Filter, Focusrite, Infected, Mushroom, Isotope, Plugin Alliance, Synchro Arts, Vocal Line, and the Slate Everything Bundle, Slate Trigger, Drum Replacement, SSD, VSX, Tau Audio, Valhalla, and Waves. Wow. Okay, I made it. Almost all in one breath. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I wanted to showcase artwork. Right here is my studio emblem, Legacy Studios. My good friend Mark Ali of Ali Visuals created that for me last fall. If you are in the Nashville area or anywhere else and need some artwork, hit up Mark. I will have a link for his website and contact information in the description. Let me show you some more artwork here in the studio. Next to my signed drum head from Mr. Sean Fuller, I've got a picture of some drums that my good friend Tiffany Lee Ann, upcoming country artist, drew for me about three or four years ago. It's a picture of Pearl drums, but she put Paul in the middle there. And one of her favorite verses, 2 Chronicles 5.13. Moving on from Tiffany's picture, we have four gentlemen playing at a jazz club here. So this came from a book at my parents' house in Southern Indiana. It's from a story in a series called Julian Tells. There's a grandfather and he would have stories about his grandson, Julian. One story, he took Julian to a jazz club and here's pictures from that. I took that picture on my phone, uploaded it to Vistaprint and printed it out and here's the outcome. And moving onward, this is probably one of my favorite paintings ever. Now this is a painting my friend Susan made for me. She lives in LA. She showed me her work on her website earlier this year. And this is a picture of an angel. It's supposed to represent the negativity of hell, but the beauty of heaven. I love it so much. And moving along here to above the drums, here's a picture of a drummer. I believe this also came from Julian Tells. This is a drummer, same book. I printed that out, uploaded it to Vistaprint, and there it is. More acoustic foam. Underneath that we have right here, this little area is my bookshelf. A lot of cool things in there. I keep all my cables and books, of course, but I've got my rock saw lamp next to that. I've got my little Himalayan guy. He is someone I got from Florida when I was down there and he's playing maybe Cajon or Congas or something like that. And next to that is my Marshall amp. When I was going to the Rec W, my friend Juan gave me this. You can actually plug uh, an instrument or a guitar cable into that, put a nine volt battery in there, and it plays as an amp. This little purple car, my niece Indy gave me that. She let me take that home with me um, as a gift to remember her. And next to the car is my Digi Design M Box. This is from like 2008. I have also here just a little keychain of a guitar. I have a cajon shaker, speakers, oh, and this is my late grandmother and I. So down here, I've got cables upon cables upon cables. I have on the bottom part of the shelf, XLRs, my books, workstation. I have quarter inch right here, adapters, headphones. It's a little messy, but you know. Moving along here, we have another picture of an angel that Susan made for me. Now this one's a little unique because it's got, still representing the hell and heaven, but it's got a little one in there and then a big. So maybe a mother, father, heavenly figure, something like that. And you've probably all seen this before, but here's my Legacy Studios couch. And I've been stranded here a time or two, so that does pull out into a futon. It's uncomfortable as hell, but I've had to crash here a time or two. Let me show you one last picture. 
And here we have another picture from Julian Tells. It is highlighted from the lights from my desk. We have a jazz saxophone player and a trumpet player. And underneath that, what do we have? Whose name is this? None other than Calico Cooper. I didn't get to meet her, but when she was here a few years ago with Alice Cooper, Visto Blanco, I did get to meet Chuck Garrick, as well as their badass drummer, Glenn Sobel. That pretty much wraps up my artwork here. This is one thing that makes Legacy Studios Nash unique and different. Not only are my pictures and artwork unique, different, and cool, but this is a montage of some of the trinkets and things that were left over from my time working here at the rehearsal hall. This is a combination of pics from various artists. I've got some stickers from Vintage King. I've got a few stickers from Meinl that were left here behind. And check this out. There is a Ford emblem that was in the parking lot that I picked up and glued. I have about three to four different keys that were left in the parking lot. No idea, were never turned in, but I glued them on here. So little things like that have a deep and special meaning, and they include just a cool vibe from all the people that have walked through the doors here, not just in my studio, but in the building in general. What is your vibe? What makes you and your studio unique? Go ahead and let's get some interaction going and let me know in those comments. Now it's time to talk about part four, social media connections and amenities. You can check out everything that I do on social media pages at Legacy Studios Nash. I have got connections at other studios, branding, publishing, so you can get your song out there. While you're here tracking, let me show you what I call my hydration station. That's fancy for my fridge, but I do keep it stocked up with water and throat coat. While I don't have perfect pitch, I can help you achieve the best performance possible with coaching. I have all the plugins as mentioned prior to get your mix right. This is my hydration station. Basically, it's just a fridge. Let me open it up and show you what we're working with. Tons and tons of water. Uh-oh, looks like I do have some black abbeys in the basement holding things up. We've got some peanut butter milk stout in there as well. Tons and tons of water. We've got, looks like, a vitamin water in there too. When you come to Legacy Studios, we're gonna have a lot of fun, but your health is important. I do keep things stocked up with my throat coat up here. This whole process is about having fun. It's about letting go, letting the vibes flow, just having a good time, working together, getting what's in here out for me to record and for us to share with the world. All right, wrapping this up here. Thank you so much for taking time to watch episode one of my studio tours. I really hope you enjoy things today. If you like today's content, you already know what to do. All right, guys, until next time, my name is Paul the Fish. Fish.